anyway. <laughs> and so first of all, I'd like to just thank the organizers for inviting me to speak today. And what I'm going to be talking about is the project I've been working on for the last couple of years, sort of on and off, which has been modeling the effect of protein stoichiometry on the unfolded protein response, and in this case, in cancer cells. So this is sort of a brief overview of the unfolded protein response. Um, and what it is, it's a protective mechanism in the cell that clears either incorrectly folded or damaged proteins. And the way that this works is you have the chaperone protein GRP78, which is a high affinity for unfolded or damaged proteins. And um, it binds to them, uh, the chaperones move to the degradation network or assist in their refolding. Under sort of low unfolded protein conditions, GRP78 will also bind to three receptors, IRE1, PERC, and ATF6, and act as an inhibitor. When you get an increase in the unfolded protein levels or increase in uh, damage, the GRP78 will be sequestered away from the three receptors and the unfolded protein response will be activated uh, by three, the three distinct arms or the way in the response arm. So why we want to look at this is because the unfolded protein response in the last few years has become quite a sort of robust topic. In cancer cells, it's become it is upregulated in many different types of cancer. Um, but it's also been found in Alzheimer's and uh, also musculoskeletal diseases, which I also work on. So the work that took me carried out before I got there by Sean Martin, an experimentalist in the lab looked at the total amount of GRP78 uh, protein cell compared to the total amount of the receptors in the cell. So you measure all of these. As you can see, we had um, two um, cell lines for three different cancer cell types, so melanoma, glioblastoma, and neuroblastoma. And in the melanoma and the glioblastoma, the GRP78 levels are in excess of the total level of the receptors. However, in the neuroblastoma, this is the opposite, but the total level of receptors is in excess of the total level of GRP78. And so this is where I sort of came into the project with the aim of building a dynamic model to look at how this affects the system. And Sean also produced time plus data for some of the downstream elements of the unfold project, and so I was able to use those to parameterize the model. And he produced um, GLP78 overexpression data where he overexpressed GLP78 cells and then again looked at relative expression and downstream effectors. And so I'm going to use that to validate the models and then obviously explore how the stoichiometry in the different cell lines affects the output. So this is the model I built. And as you can see so from before, you have the GLP78 sort of a central node. And it, I1, uh, ATF6, all the downstream effectors, and then the unfolded protein binding the GRP78 taken away to the 26S proteasome. And one of the drugs that we used in the experiment was uh, bortisimate. And this binds to the 26S proteasome and it inhibits its function, so it can no longer degrade the proteins. What happens in this case is that you then get a buildup of unfolded proteins in the cell and the unfolded protein response is activated. So I mentioned that we had experimental data, so we had the experimental data for ATF4 downstream per and total ATF6, uh, which we can measure as it's cleaved into a different part of protein. And we also had the total amount of concentrations for ATF6, IRE1, per and GRP78. And so this is the results following the parameter estimation for the melanoma cell lines. And as you can see for the ATF4 and ATF6, we were able to achieve nice um, fits to the experimental data as shown in the uh, sort of red dots. And this fold the same as well for the glioblastoma, where again, for ATF4 and ATF6, the model simulation was quite close to the experimental data. So once we've done this one, then want to look at, well, is this stuff, does it hold true for the overexpression of GRP78? So how we did this was, we had the initial concentrations for the receptors in GRP78. We knew what the relative induction of GRP78 and the three receptors were when you overexpressed GRP78 cells. So we were able to change those initial conditions in each of the models. Well, in one 
Maar alle waar mogelijk heel lastig om worden. Die uh, proberen een eenmaal. En dan simuleren time calls for four hours to master experimental data. Ja. Uh, so, yeah. And attain a final concentration in the normal model and the overexpression model for the ATF4 concentration. As you can see from the uh, experimental data, when you overexpress GRP78 in the cell, you get a decrease in the level of relative expression of ATF4. Um, and that holds true for the simulation data as well, for both the melanoma and the glioblastoma model. So this is summarize what we found there for both the melanoma and the glioblastoma where the GRP78 is in excess of the total amount of receptors, just using the standard sort of topology of the network that we've taken from the literature, we were able to get a nice fit to the data that we had. So what we then want to do is have a look at the neuroblastoma cells. So as I mentioned before, the total amount of receptors is in excess of GRP78 in these cells. And we want to look at, would the same network hold true and still be able to replicate the data for the neuroblastoma. Um, it sort of works, but it's not quite unfortunately. So on the top here, what we have is the same data I've shown you for the melanoma and glioblastoma, but in neuroblastoma cell So as you can see, you still get a nice fit to the experimental data. The problem comes when, in the bottom ones here, where we actually just remove autism from the cells in the simulation, and you still get activation of the network regardless. Um, and this shown here in the bottom bit, so I mentioned ATF6 is cleaved. So it's not even, so ATF6 dis, uh, dissociated from GRP78 is actually being converted into its active form. So this has sort of shown us that the network topology that we have at the minute doesn't seem to be able to explain the neuroblastoma data. And having a look at the overexpression data, which we couldn't validate against because we didn't have a sort of steady state model. If you look at the level of ATF4 expression when you overexpress GRP78, in contrast to the melanoma glioblastoma where ATF4 was repressed, you actually get an induction of ATF4 in the neuroblastoma, so you get even more expression. And that is explainable um, because when you overexpress GRP78 in those cells, you also get overexpression of all three receptors. What Sean also had a look at was if what happens if you knock down. GRP78 by RNA, and you looked at sort of the relative numbers, the relative level of cell death in each of the cells once you treat with autism. So as you can see here, for the two melanoma cell lines and for the two glioblastoma cell lines, when you knock down GRP78, there's increased cell death in all four of those cell lines. However, in the neuroblastoma cell lines, there's no significant difference between the GRP78 knockdown and the control cells. So, to sum up, basically, using just the standard network topology, we were able to replicate the experimental results of glioblastoma and melanoma cell lines, but only in the case where GRP78 is in excess of the three receptors. In the neuroblastoma cell lines, where it's, um, the receptors are in excess of the GRP78, we were not able to replicate the experimental data. Uh, the other um, experimental data that we have seems to almost suggest that the GRP78 is not as sort of needed in these cells. So the potential for the work that we need to look at is possibly having a look at a two-dimensional model which would be more suited to sort of membrane biology. Or having a look at are there any other mechanisms involved, which I sort of started doing with the neuroblastoma cell lines and adding in parts of the network that we sort of discovered at the beginning in different mechanisms, you see, and we haven't had a lot of success with that. Um, so I'd finally just like to thank my supervisors, um, Chris Redford and Daryl Shanley, and also the Mormon group, and Sean Martin for producing all the experimental data. Thank you.